Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the Power Level account. We have 17,000 diamonds, so we have had an incredible amount of diamonds going through a lot of different aspects of AFK Arena. We are at 24-12, so made a lot of progression in there. Of course, we are completely free to play on this. Um, Damon has been our carry. He is such an incredible, incredible carry, guys. Now, I'm going to go through a guide that came up on AFK Inside. Absolutely love their guides. A, a big shout out to them. Um, it is a very early beginner's guide, and I want to run through it, make sure that I'm looking at um, the information, seeing that it's legit, kind of fact-checking some of the, the stuff that you have over there, give you some kind of tips and tricks that I've kind of learned through the years of playing AFK Arena. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the guide. All right, guys, so this is the Hero's Priority Guide, the Noble Tavern. So again, we're going to break this down, and I dropped out the camera. That way you can take and look at the full guide in its entirety, guys. And I'm going to show you um, kind of the breakdown of the heroes that they have. Now, essentially, let's say this is day one. You just get to the portion of the wish list. Um, this is how you can set your heroes. And again, I'm going to kind of go through um, the, the different heroes, the different factions, see exactly what we have going on with this. Um, ultimately, looking at the guide, when you get some of these heroes set and you can see they have specific stars, specific builds on here, you swap out kind of like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, when you're looking again at the priority of some of the heroes, and again, I'm going to give you some of my input on here. So let's start at the beginning, guys, with our light bears. Now, Scarlet, of course, the strongest by far light bear that we have. Even on par, guys, with the Waken version of Thane, except she has an exceptional amount of utility, um, which Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm, Guild Bosses, um, pretty much any boss within AFK Arena, Scarlet is kind of the go-to in a combination with Grez, um, works incredibly well. Now, Rowan, definitely going to that Ascended level. Now, why he doesn't need furniture, the Three of Nine furniture on him does help a little bit. But overall, guys, Rowan, you really want to get to Mythic for the um, signature item. It is really the plus 30 signature item that makes him a big difference. Now, Rosaline, they have her at three stars. I think that's really in the buffing aspect for Scarlet. Um, but overall, I would definitely take her to Ascended. Engraving on her, not a big priority again. Um, furniture, again, not a huge priority on her. Building up the signature item. Essentially, early game, I, I wouldn't leave her in there that long to get three stars um, just because of the build in the engraving. Again, on my account, I don't have her engraved. I, I don't see the, the huge benefit. Now, on the other hand, Estrilda taking her all the way to one star. Um, her plus 30 engraving is exceptional. It actually gets her abilities up faster. Um, and she is a very, very big buffer within AFK Arena, which is the reason why I would prioritize building her out. Um, even the signature item, even the furniture, and now the engraving guys, absolutely. Now looking at Rain, Rain has to be ascended for the three of nine furniture. That is where she amplifies the damage that the heroes do on a specific target, which is the reason she is put in here, guys. Now looking again, these are kind of the swap heroes. So we have Maro in here. Absolutely agree, guys, when it comes to the um, Light Bear Tower, he does incredibly well in teams. Cecilia has a lot of utility, hunting field utility, Abyssal Expedition utility, um, definitely in there. Same with Hendrick. Hendrick brings a lot of utility, brings a lot of the defensive aspect. In there, we see him most recently run with the Awakened version of Thane. Then we have Sonya in here. Sonya, again, I would probably take her up to Ascended because her furniture has a really big impact um, with the damage mitigation with the Golden Roses. And then we have Gwen in here again, damage outside of the tower. I don't see her used anywhere outside of really the Light Bearer Tower at this point. So again, it, it, the Light Bearer faction doesn't have a lot of super strong heroes. So absolutely, guys, this would be a pretty good build. Again, the only change that I would do is probably not building out um, Rosaline as high. Um, just for the fact that there could be a couple other heroes to help out of here. But if you do build her up to three stars, guys, you're not going to be disappointed. Again, because she is amplifying and dealing with the survivability that they could see within formations, um, having her built out. Now, getting to our Maulers, Kren, five stars, absolutely, guys. All of the primary damage dealers within AFK Arena have to go to that five star rating just for the simple fact that it is adding an incredible amount of stats on there, um, which is really the priority. Now here they have Scarath with one star. Again, 
I would get him to the three of nine furniture. That is really the five pull. That is the reason why players build him. Um, adding the extra star on him, I, I'm not going to engrave him and I don't have him engraved. Again, you could build him a little bit more because we do see him used in a couple different game modes. But overall, guys, the priority is take him to Ascended. Anasta, on the other hand, absolutely, guys, building Anasta out. She is another hero that has a considerable investment, but when you do invest in her, you do get a pretty solid return. Same with Scrag. Scrag, you want to build out the 9 of 9 furniture plus 20 signature item as soon as possible, guys. That really builds the invade team. Now, interesting enough, we only have Elite Brutus and we have Elite Warwick in here. You can see, guys, the Elite version of Brutus leveled up versus the Ascended level of Brutus um, completely leveled up is going to have the same functionality. There's not really a big reason to build them up. Now with Warwick, you will have to build them up a little bit eventually. Big thing with him, guys, is he is a boss debuffer. Um, if you don't build them up eventually, again, I know this is an early guide, but if you do not build them up, you are not going to have the survivability. Similar to Mortis, similar to the twins, the survivability will not be there. He'll actually join the battle, die in about 10 or 15 seconds, um, which you cannot have. you got to keep that buff up through the entire fight. Now, Drez, absolutely, guys. He is one that I think a lot of players really um, lack on. Drez being built up. Big one with Drez, guys, 9 of 9 furniture. Same with Entendre, um, 9 of 9 furniture. Now, Entendre is one that I would add a star onto. For the simple fact, guys, her plus 60 engraving is very strong with her survivability. I'm um, giving her the ability to mark targets and health regeneration. Nemesu, even with furniture, guys, he's not going to make a big difference. But if you want any survivability out of here, you're going to have to get that. Same with Titus, taking him up to Mythic, get the signature item built up a little bit. Um, to kind of get some of his damage mitigation up and allow him to provide some CC within the Mauler Tower. Now, one that I don't see in here um, that is kind of interesting, um, I, I would say Thisu. Thisu early game is pretty strong if you do build him out a little bit. But again, this is a, a pretty solid lineup, especially just having that single version of Brutus will make a big difference, guys. Now, looking at the Wilders, um, Saurus, one star, even if you just take him to that ascended level, um, not a hero that is worth engraving. I know we used him once upon a time, but even just taking him to Mythic, again, engraving is not going to be there. Raku, five stars, absolutely, guys, falls right under the damage dealer. For the primary faction, we see him in a lot of aspects of AFK Arena. Now, Mishka, taking her to, to one star or three star doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, she is going to be a 30960, meaning you are going to completely max her out. Um, plus 30 signature item, 9 and 9 furniture, and of course the, the plus 60 engraving. Adding the two stars additional on there, again, not going to make that big of a difference. Um, a star, the exact same, you're going to build her out as well. You're going to want the one star on her to be able to build her out. Like a similar that we see with Brutus, Leica works for the initial burst. Um, the energy and of course the haste all you need is one level if you have her leveled up it will work incredibly well now looking at the subs guys iran would actually drop in here taking him to mythic if you want the five pull to work depending on the formations you're running you're probably going to have to build him up a little bit more um but overall guys you don't want to over invest in him we don't see him really utilized that much or he's just utilized for that five pull the crowd control aspect and then he dies at that point now, Nevi, of course, one star in there. Again, you want to do the engraving. We have um, Tassian here and Pippa. Again, Pippa, of course, is the signature item that you want to get, which is the reason why she's built up to Mythic. And then, of course, Tassi. Um, you want to build her up. You want to get the furniture on there for the damage mitigation, which is really the build on there. Now, Iran or Orin, you're going to have to build up a little bit more, guys. I would put some stars on him if you are driving him. Um, the reason being is you're not going to have the survivability. If you just have the signature item and the furniture, you're going to run short on the survivability because you don't have the engraving or you don't have the stats to actually keep him alive. He is super boot burst, guys, but short of the tower, we're really not seeing him used in very many places. Now, getting into the Greyborn, one of my absolute favorite guys, Damon, five stars, Grez, five stars, Silas, a star. Even here, guys, Oden, I would take to five stars. Even Pharrell, I would build up, again, early game. This will work incredibly well. But he is a hero that is still utilized today, guys. 
I'm in chapter 44. He still works incredibly well as of today, which is the reason I would build him up earlier, right? Build him up much higher than this, guys, because he is a hero that is going to provide more crowd control, also more energy disintegration as you do build him up. Now, Hodgkin, you're going to definitely want to build up. Desira, um, Izold, again, the niche formation. Kelthar, you need unlocked for the crowd control aspect with the Thorin cheese. Then, of course, Thorin, guys, you don't want to engrave Thorin. So he is perfect where he is. Izold, you are going to engrave Hodgkin. Again, maybe somewhere down the road you're going to engrave. But early game, guys, you're going to have a lot of heroes to really focus on and build. He, even though he is a tank, he is a very, very strong buffer. Now we get to the Stargazer. Now this is pretty interesting in here. Um, we have, you can see, Elite Plus Twins, Elite Plus um, Mortis. Now this big reason is because you can utilize them within the Abyssal Expedition. Um, big thing with both of those heroes, guys, they kind of share the, the same kind of cusp of the buffing within um, game modes. Now, the big thing with them, guys, is if they're dying out early in combat, you're going to have to build them up a little bit higher because essentially you want them to survive at least till Mortis buffs up. But the twins, you want them to survive as much as you can. Now, one single copy of Mahira. That's pretty interesting because Mahira is similar that we've seen um, with Laika and what we've seen with Brutus is at one single copy, guys. Her ultimate mesmerize ability based on level will work the same if you have her built out just to one elite copy or if you have her to ascended five stars it is going to be the exact same mesmerize ability big thing is when you start getting into level deficiencies um her survivability you have to get her to live through the fight so again there's going to be a point where you're going to have to build her up a little bit higher and i don't see her through here but again you're going to have to look at the survivability and see what problems you're having with her now, Lucretia, one star, absolutely, guys, she is a hero that you are going to prioritize building up some um, more stars on. And then you can see, guys, Mortis and the twins a little bit higher. Um, for the simple fact, again, they are the primary buffers in AFK Arena. Then we get into Alna, 9 of 9 furniture, and absolute priority. You have Halos, which is going to be a 30960 character as well, meaning he is going to be fully built. Then we add in the twins with one star. Again, you're going to start, depending on survivability, you're actually going to start building them out a little bit higher. Now, before I would build out the twins, personally, I would go with Kazard first because the Charmizard with Kazard and um, Mahira is going to work. But even outside of the Charmizard, guys, Kazard works incredibly well. I would swap probably these two. I would put Kazard before the twins. Again, you're going to want to build the twins out if you're having survivability issues. If the twins are surviving a minute 30 in boss fights, not really a huge priority to build them out. And it's going to be quite a few copies where Kazard can stay at Mythic and he can be completely done. And then Moreal. Moreal, actually pretty interesting, guys. We are seeing her in a considerable amount of Cursed Realm comps, even with Torn, without Torn. Um, building her up seems to be pretty solid priority. Even utilized within some of the Twisted Realm, some of the Cursed Realm, we've seen her in a couple places. Same with the original version of Taylene, guys. We have seen her placed all over the map. Um, looking at the Temporal Rift, looking at the Twisted Realm, the Cursed Realm, um, the Awakened version of Taylene has absolutely made a comeback, guys, as a hero that is to be reckoned with. Um, we Again, we've seen her as the best in slot in a lot of different formations. Even at the current heroes, we've seen the exact same. Now, looking down here at the Temple of Time, um, they have building Solus to one star. Now, now the, the Temple of Time, guys, just because of the rarity of the heroes, one thing you definitely have to take into consideration um, is can you merc these heroes? So what I mean by that, guys, is can you borrow them you know, from a friend on a regular basis that has them built? It can change depending on, again, the utility of the heroes that you're getting. Now, Solus will be strong, guys. Now, she works at Legendary. She works at, of course, Fully Ascended 1 Star. Um, both of them will work well. Now, if you want the Awakened version of Solus to do damage, that is where you have to build her out, guys. That is really the focus to build her out is where you'll kind of get the damage in there. Aziz in here, I, I would not build. Big reason for that, guys, is 
not only is he kind of niche in the campaign, is you could spend 50, 60, 70 time emblems to get one single copy and then end up not using him at all. Um, I know early game, he could be pretty good for the crowd control aspect, but you have Pharrell, you have Nara, you have a couple other heroes that will kind of fit the bill um, between those two. And then a question mark around Taylene. Again, the survivability aspect in there. Um, I, I, I wouldn't build her. My choice would be building Solus and then going right to Brutus. Um, that would be my, my very solid choice in there. Then I would probably go either probably Thane or Taylene. Again, probably Taylene in this point. Um, just for the simple fact, again, the utility where we're seeing her in a lot of different formations, Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm. Um, also seeing her in a lot of the PvP aspect. So again, I would go Solus. I would go Brutus. I would go Taylene. Um, and then probably into either Thane or Baden. Kind of your choice at that point. Now looking down here, guys. Labyrinth, absolutely 100% Joan of Arc. You're going to build her out. Um, then followed by Arthur. A lot of players wonder about Wukong. Honestly, he has no place within the AFK arena right now. Um, so I would go ahead and pass on there. Then we want the emblems. Then we want the red chest. Now the emblems, essentially, you're going to buy until you get either all of the heroes at plus 30, plus 40 signature items, or if you're stockpiling them, guys, because essentially when we have the new dimensional heroes come out, like Yennefer and Geralt, you'll already have the emblems in there to take them to the plus 30 signature items, which is really what you want to do. And then, of course, the red chest. Now, Garrison, 100% agree with this, guys. Um, when you look overall big picture AFK arena, Elbeto is probably one of the most game-changing heroes that we see within AFK arena. Um, she can run in a lot of different formations with a ton of different heroes, which is the reason I would absolutely garrison her first, because chances are you have other um, dimensional heroes already. Yennefer, you know, you got Geralt, you might have Merlin, you might have Leonardo da Vinci, you might have Joan of Arc. Depending on who you have, guys, this would be my choice, followed by Ainz, and then Queen, of course, with the five pull, Ezio, Prince of Persia, unfortunately, we're not seeing him anywhere anymore, but the first four, absolutely, I, I agree with that priority completely. Then, of course, the Challenger Sword, one copy of Aziz, now, again, very similar to Brutus, Laika, and also Mahira, um, one copy will work. Um, depending on, again, the level deficiency, the game mode that you're running, this will work then right into Merlin or Leonardo. Now, these two, in my opinion, can be kind of interchangeable. Um, big thing with those guys is when you're looking at the crowd control, if you're building up Joan, you're doing support here. If you do Merlin, you're getting kind of double support. If I am building up Joan, I would probably go with Leonardo first. Again, just so I have the crowd control aspect. Also, if you have Kazard, it'll make a big difference with the Raku combination, which does work incredibly well. Then looking at Zorath, um, yes, Zorath, absolutely, guys, worth building up. He does an incredible amount of damage. Has to have the three of nine furniture to really perform well. But if you want him to do damage, you're gonna have to build him out. One copy of the um of Athelia, and then you can see Aziz built up, Athelia built up, and then of course Orthos built up. Special thanks and help to No Mercy, as well as AFK Inside Guys. Um, very, very cool, complete guide. If you follow this, guys, you cannot go wrong with the builds that we have on here. I agree with probably 99% of it. Again, just through experience, through hero builds, there's always gonna be some changes that you could possibly do. And again, it is kind of dependent on the play style. If you're PVP focused, if you're PVE focused, if you're based on, you know, the a the abyssal expedition looking at the hunting fields things of that nature it could change what you're building in here so again guys big shout out to everyone for creating this guide i love it and i love it i i'm gonna go ahead and put the link down below so you guys can check it out and as always thank you guys for watching